So we're heading off to go see some friends inside the campground. We first met Chris and Aaron last summer in Virginia. Had a great energy, really positive, upbeat couple. They'd only been on the road full time for six months at that time. It's now been a year, so we're going to check in with them. They'll take us on a tour of their van and share the ups, downs and realities of living in 100 square feet while building a business from the road. get up and greet you, but then you won't be able to come in. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to our home. Mark looks very comfortable back there. I am. I'm ready for the long haul, sitting back here in my little lounge area. <laughs> this is super comfortable. <laughs> That's nice. And about 15 feet of leg room. Welcome back to our channel everyone, we're Julia and Mark from RV Love and we want to introduce you to our new friends Christine and Aaron. Hello. And for them to learn more about your life here in your van. Yes. We've been on the road one year as of January 13th and we live in the van, we work in the van, we travel in the van, we're in the van all the time. 24-7. <laughs> 24-7. Yes. Well that's, that's what I think is one of the most amazing things is that it's not just traveling in it, you guys actually work full time in it. We do. So, we yeah. do. We So not only did we throw our lives upside down by living in a van, we started a business together as husband and wife, which is a whole different element of working. So. Oh yes, that was it a big definitely transition. is. Yeah. <laughs> We in a van. That. We know that all too well. That was a big transition for us, even in our larger space. But yeah, for you yeah. Guys, be, and you guys did all at once. You did all those changes right simultaneously. It's so. an we did, yeah. Yep. So where did you live when before you hit the road? Minneapolis, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. and what was your uh, prior careers before you hit the road? I worked uh, in an auto parts company for 18 years. It was wow. pretty much the only job I've ever had. And I just kind of worked my way up through the levels and uh, was in management and sales. I was a senior director of operations for an advertising company. 15 years, I started as a receptionist and accounts payable and just worked my way up and put in some a lot of sweat and tears. Um, and tell us first about what we're in here. 2014 Airstream Interstate 3500 Mercedes Sprinter chassis. Yep. And it's the dual wardrobe layout, which is a very unique floor plan. And we love it because of all the storage that it has to offer for two people living in it at the same time. This is all my makeup and hair dryers, toiletries, and this is all Aaron's cubbies. But here we get a little storage too. So when we park, I just flip my seat around and then that makes it in a lounge, turns it into a lounge, and it also turns it into my office because I sit here and I always just put my feet up out of habit and pull my table out. So I use this for my laptop office area, my desk, and my table. If I'm eating, I just always sit here. Like this is just my little nook. Morning, day, and night, and driving. This is my spot. I do have nice views and sometimes we work a lot in parking lots if we're out on the streets for a week or so and we'll sit in parking lots and work. Aaron's in the back and it works good. So most of these Sprinter vans are about six foot three on the inside and you can see I got a nice little inch of free space up there so I'm six foot two. I don't mind uh, the, the height at all. There are a few low points if you walk back this way into the air conditioner. I'll hit it just a little bit. And then inside our bathroom here also is a little bit lower. So I kind of got to duck down in there. But other than those two spots, it's pretty good. So I get the corner office, if you will. <laughs> it's kind of the big suite. Um, and it's it's pretty comfortable. I work with a, uh, a laptop desk. The laptop goes down and that's about it. Usually the feet are up here. It's a little bit of this action, a little bit of that. Checking out Christine up front. It's a good spot to work. And that's one of the reasons we chose this van because it had a bit of a unique layout where she could work out up front and I could work in the back. And it gives us just a little bit of space to, uh, you know, have some, some breathing room, some elbow room. And it's been great. It works out really well for us and it's, uh, keeping our relationship alive. 
it's a little bit more spacious of a van than some of the other vans out there. It works well for two people and having two office spaces and also uh, the biggest thing that we fell in love with was the interior and like the nice white space. It, it helps keep it big and open. Super bright and clean. I have to say I'm really impressed with the storage you have in here. Like there are nooks and crannies and drawers and cupboards everywhere in here. I'm amazed at how much you're able to fit in here and keep it all so nice and neat and tidy. Yeah, yeah we're really not like minimalist in this thing. We have, we have a lot of stuff. Tons of clothes and you know winter gear and summer gear and um, there's a lot that you can fit mm -hmm. in here. We yeah. carry our whole gym with us. We have 150 pounds of dumbbells mm -hmm. and parallel bars, and we have a big uh, five-sided tent and rugs. And so there's a lot you can cram in here. There's the rear storage in our Sprinter van. That's pretty normal. carrying a lot and it's it feels so homey and it's it, when i was looking at the dimensions of it i think oh it's going to be really feeling small but mm -hmm. when you're in it it actually feels much larger than i would have expected it yeah they did a good job with the space yeah. layout yeah how far have you traveled in your van mm, we've made it lot. all the way around the edge of the country some people call it the margarita rim because you're on the ocean the whole time <laughs> I never heard of that. So when we and left, the salt is it because of the salt? Yeah, it's a salt water. Yeah. So it's been about sixteen thousand miles, roughly thirty-two states, give or take, and we hit up some national parks. Now that we're on the west coast, we're able to see more of like the natural beauty. And the east coast was all big cities, which was really fun. It was just like city, 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 city. Drive, yeah. drive, 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 and it was a little exhausting. And now it's a little bit slowed down over here. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, though, this would be a whole lot easier in cities than a big lumbering coach like ours. Though. You guys can still yeah. actually get into the cities and really drive around in it because it's not much wider than a regular car. And yeah. It's a little bit. And the lengthwise, you know, it's about it's over 22 feet, but not less than 23. So you can yeah. actually still park in an actual parking space at a grocery store yeah. or whatever. Like yeah. That. We have yeah. zero limitations, really. Yeah. No worries driving in or out of cities, parks, anything like that. Do you do all the driving or most of the driving? I do all of the driving. Why is that? Because Aaron's a better passenger than I am. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a little bit of getting used to with the extra weight and the extra height and length. You have to just go really slow. People don't realize that this is 11,000 pounds of high cabinetry. Things will fall out. If I turn too fast, every bump is magnified. And it's just really dangerous to drive something this heavy really fast. I can hurt people. It takes time to slow down. It is a lot bigger, but I do love it. It drives really nice. The diesel is awesome. And it's a really smooth ride. The seats are so comfortable. I love travel days. And we really look forward to just picking up and going wherever we want to go and going up mountains, going into cities, um, going into rustic areas, you name it. We go there and that's why we love our van. 26 gallons fuel tank so that uh, typically we get 300 350 miles with that tank we get 16 to 18 miles per gallon average but i'm really good at parking this i parallel park it on the streets all the time like i'm pretty good <laughs> i love driving my van <laughs> home sweet van one of the things I thought was really interesting when we were talking the other day is that you guys did a ton of research. Like this was not just something you jumped into overnight. You guys planned, you planned a downsizing thing for multiple years and then into the van thing, you was even quite a bit if you want to talk a bit about that. Yeah, so we, our process was five years from the time we sold our house, started downsizing, but we really knew that we were going to live in a van for two years prior to our departure date. So it was a five year plan with a two year RV vision. And we knew right away it was gonna be a van. We didn't look at anything else. We didn't consider anything else. And we worked really hard. We saved really hard. We saved 75% of our money. We researched, we watched YouTubers to get a feel for what our life was going to become. And Aaron did all the research on our rig and what we would purchase. He spent 18 months just van shopping and it drove me nuts just watching him. <laughs> but that's the fun part. That's like the dreaming stage where yeah. you get to kind of, you know, just envision what you could do, what it's going to be like. You get to look at all the great Instagram pictures and the YouTube stories and life looks wonderful. It's very glamorous. Yeah. 
you know, so then you're, you're caught up in the moment and you're wanting to live that lifestyle. So, um, it's great when we finally get into it, but you're going to hit some stresses and you're going to hit some road bumps and it's not, you know, going to be all great pictures and oceans it's and beaches. And it's not all the Instagrammable Facebook social yeah. media lifestyle. Well, and that was yeah. actually what I was going to ask you is that you were having all these ideas and envisioning what it would be like, but what were some of your biggest surprises when you gotten out on, and it really is the life? It's, it's stressful. Like <laughs> a lot of times we don't know where we're sleeping tonight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We didn't you know? know how stressful it was going to be. Um, you touched base on, you know, moving in and working together and starting a business and mm -hmm. changing our lifestyle. And you're on top of each other. We're always yeah. an arm's length away. We always joke about that. Mm -hmm. So you, you bicker a lot more than what you're used to. We <laughs> found that out and, and, uh, it hasn't killed us. So we're a little yeah. bit stronger when you're in a, you know, a traditional job and house, um, you know, usually you're, you're gone for 10 hours, 12 hours a day. There's some separation. Mm -hmm. So then you come back home, mm -hmm. there's your beautiful wife, you're smiling, you're kissing, you love each other, you know, you enjoy the evening together, you go to bed and then you go off and you go to work. Well, mm -hmm. now we're together 24 seven within arm's reach of each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that took a surprising amount of um, time to get used to because we did not fight at all. We fought maybe like once a year. Mm -hmm. We were that couple where people mm -hmm. thought we were we were magical. There's something wrong <laughs> yeah. with us. Yeah. And now it's yeah. I mean now it's it's not like that, but it's it's more of a normal. We're more just normal now. Yeah. We're just bigger like a normal couple. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You guys still have an amazing energy, if you ask me. So. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. We are truly enjoying this lifestyle, we and are. we're. Um, feeling a sense of freedom that that we did not feel before and a sense of fulfillment too yeah. so that's a that's a big deal for us where we're trying to have more self-fulfillment in a non-selfish way yeah and mm -hmm. enjoy it a little bit more taking control of your life and leading it the way you want to lead it and spending time working on what you want to work on and we're helping people for the first time ever we didn't have intrinsic reward at our previous mm -hmm. careers and now for the first time we have that and it's awesome yeah well actually tell us a bit more about what you guys do now mm. so so we do online coaching we do fitness programs mm -hmm. and nutrition coaching mm -hmm. it's 100 percent online we help people no matter where they are no matter where we are we connect online and it's for people in households regular households but also mm -hmm. others in the rv community we really want to help find that balance for eating better and working out and living the best life you can starting now and it's and it's a very progressive approach where just a little bit better every day there's no fad diets there's no restrictions there's no ripping a rug from underneath your feet so that it's sustainable yeah i love that approach on your channel you do some of videos about your lifestyle but then you also do cooking videos that show different recipes every week as well yes right? so <laughs> I've always loved cooking and Food Network, and I feel like I finally got my own Food Network <laughs> show every Wednesday in my kitchen, and it's fun, and um, it's just trying to eat better, and if you cook your meals at home, you're just taking the first step of being better, and just, uh, you know, a lot of RVers like to take convenience foods or pick food up all the time, and I just want to help show people that you can do it in your van, and if you say you can't, you're just making excuses. There you go. All right, boss. <laughs> <laughs> and we had fun. We had fun cooking together a meal in our big motorhome. Yeah, that was fun. And we're going to have fun cooking a meal in your van tonight because then we've got a much more limited space. Yeah. So I think what, that's going to be really fun to show people that it doesn't matter how small your RV is, you can yeah. always find a way to be able to eat well and eat healthy. And you're just going to be very selective about, I guess, what you cook and what yeah. you use to cook it with. And yeah. yeah. It's fun. I'm excited. Some of the main things that were really important to us as we were shopping for our van, as I was researching for 18 months, was the layout, number one. Mm. Number two, the tank capacities. And number three, kind of the electrical system, since we were going to be uh, living and working in this full time. Mm. That was important. So right away, the layout, we just both, this was like one of the first vans that we fell in love with. The colors, the size, the space between the craftsmanship, the craftsmanship, the storage, all that was great. Um, the tank capacities in the Airstream interstates are uh, a little bit above average for the Class Bs. So it's 26 gallon fresh, 27 gray, and then a 15 gallon black tank where 
some class b's have like a nine gallon black tank or down to the cassette toilets which are six gallons and mm. that's really tiny that's, that's like tough. that's like a one day use wow. it gets old quick yeah. Yeah. yeah so the shower comes up here and this curtain comes down you just velcro it to that side and you velcro it there and there's a little air vent here you turn the fan on and then when you shower we have our soap right here and you kind of have to turn this way to like really suds up your hair because there's just not enough space this way we do military style showers anyway where you turn it on and i usually am standing this way to like get my hair so it's so nice to have a shower on the road and it's way nicer than using the rv park showers which i just don't understand why people do that if they have it in their coach but to each their own we use ours all the time and we love it and it's not a pain being a wet bath and wiping it down how do you find that it's very easy we squeegee the walls we'll squeegee the floor and then the shower curtain is what stays wet but we have our tornado heater that we plug in and we just prop it right here to blow on the shower curtain and it usually dries off the entire bathroom within 15 to 30 minutes but if you're out on the street and we don't have access to electricity and we can't use the fan then it will stay damp in here all day and that's kind of grody but you get used to it yeah it's, it's so small i'm relieved it's like wood oh. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna come back and join us yeah so the electrical capacity on most vans is not uh, up for up to par for full-time living. So you usually do have to do some type of upgrade. Um, this particular van came with a 50 amp solar panel. So it was very easy for me to put three 100 watts in place of that 50 watt because mm -hmm. it was all pre-wired from the top to the bottom. Nice. So I had to do very little work for that. I mean, it took us three days and you know five hundred dollars to do something like that right um and then the batteries we just kind of doubled those with larger agms how much time do you spend in campgrounds as opposed to boondocking or out you know urban camping out on the streets and in cities or how would what would be the balance would you say the well the, the first um year was really two weeks in one week out so 66 percent in campgrounds mm -hmm. but since then we've upgraded our thousand trails membership so mm -hmm. we're really in campgrounds closer to i don't know 80 90 percent we are limited in a class b um for boondocking so your tank's capacity really is going to give you two to three days of water and and gray and black tank usage um and then because we work full-time our solar and our batteries also only last a, a few days. So, um, you know, until you upgrade to the big lithium setups, that's where you can push that out quite a bit farther, maybe indefinitely. Um, but uh, it really does limit us to a couple days of boondocking. So, you know, we like to take these little quick excursions and, you know, get out there a little bit, but for the full-time work life, it's a little bit easier in campgrounds right now. Yeah, and also for connectivity issues too. Like mm, I need yeah. to have reliable service so that I stay connected with my clients every mm. single day. And mm. I just can't risk losing that. Yeah, that's exactly how it was for us. Yep. It was just prioritizing connectivity and it was just it's just easier because it's more things to think about managing your yeah. power and your water resources. It just yeah. takes up a lot of mental bandwidth that you need, could be directing to your work. Yeah, and when you're driving around every day from spot to spot and that's exhausting everything too. and you lose efficiency, so hours that you yeah. should be working, you're driving and trying mm -hmm. to figure out where you're going to go and, and then your 10 hour work day turns into a four hour work day and then the bickering starts. Mm. Right, because you lose the productivity. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree. Yeah, travel days. Well said. Yeah. Anybody who full time RVs knows travel days are pretty much just that. You, it's really hard to get anything else done. Yeah, mm. it's true. Yeah, and travel day is stressful. Yeah. And that's usually when things go wrong. It is. Speaking of which, so tell us, you know, RVs always have a reputation of things breaking, going wrong. We love finding out what is wrong with your RV. Like, what's broken that needs fixing at the moment? Two things. Our towel bar broke the welds on it so we need a new towel bar which is you know probably 15 dollars and four screws in the bathroom just in the bathroom the towels yeah. yeah okay so that broke that's a really easy one we just you know it's a particular it's a diy a particular size yeah. that's an easy one um but also our macerator pump which uh is our gray and black water waste pump 
um, it's on the fritz right now. So uh -oh. it kind of shuts off intermittently as you're pumping and you know, you don't <laughs> okay. want, you don't that want that to not turn high on. priority. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that is. a DIY fix, Aaron? Can you fix that? Or is that something you're going to need to take into a repair shop to get taken? It is something of? you can do yourself. It's a bit of a messy job. It's underneath the van. <laughs> it is something you can totally do yourself. Uh, you know, dedicating a, a afternoon to. Are you going to be doing it? Yeah. Totally. What do you think that'll cost to repair that? I've actually already done it once. Uh, the pump itself is like $150. You and know. you're a handy guy. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So it's, it's not too bad. Yeah. Am I a handy guy, Chris? You're so handy. <laughs> Actually, when we first hit the road, everything kept breaking. Like, little normal stuff. like The radio. The radio broke. Mm -hmm. Water was leaking a little bit. Um, it just seemed like when we first hit the road and Aaron was super stressed out, Yeah. Every something just kept happening to stress him out again. Our city water inlet was leaking. The macerator pump started leaking. So I, that's why I, I think there was some winterization, some winterization stuff, issues. Yeah. Yeah. I think when you're new and you've just hit the road, that's when you're more, it, it, it is all new mm -hmm. and yeah. you don't quite know what to expect. So it is more stressful because you're always in an unfamiliar place. Yeah. You know, you, you, it's always happens at the most inconvenient time. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. You, and you don't have a garage to work in. You don't have tools to work with. Exactly. We have like very little on board here to help do repairs. So in a van, you either have a fixed bed or a convertible bed, and we are totally convertible bed people. So I'll show you how we switch that every single night. The sofa comes down in the back. Goes down flat, all of our bedding's up top. Yep, every single night, every single morning, it's gotta get switched, but it doubles your living space. So we think it's a necessity. Night mode activated. <laughs> Good job. Thanks. <laughs> Say, what do you love most about van life? The best part is just no matter where you go, there you are. Yeah. Home is always where you are. And, and um, really slowing down, being patient, and living life each day and not rushing through life. For yeah. me, mm -hmm. like I was always really an antsy, anxious person. And it's just nice to just breathe and meet people mm. and like get to talk to you guys on the street for 10 minutes or talk to a stranger for 10 minutes. And I don't care what their story is, but I get to know yeah. them a little bit. I was going to mention that like the conversational that this band starts, like we'll be in a, a parking lot and you can just tell when somebody's looking at it, checking <laughs> it out and they're interested in it. If you just like pop your head out the window or the door and say, Hey, how you hey. doing? <laughs> They are so interested in the van, what it is. Mm. And then we would mention we live in it, like they're just intrigued and it's uh, it's great the people that you meet and uh, this lifestyle is, um, the whole full-time RVing lifestyle is, is great. It's a good community. Mm. If we had to just stop and pull over and sleep somewhere, we could do that, you know? Mm. And if we wake up and wanna go, you know, try something else for the day we can do that we're addicted to having our home with us we get separation anxiety like we're <laughs> used to having our bathroom with us we're used to having our clothes with us we never have our to pack a bag yeah right. yeah everything <laughs> well i'm curious now because we we've been really fascinated to see your van and uh you've known us now we're getting to know us better on this trip do you think we could do it do you think we could do van life can you mm. be honest because you've seen our coach, our big 40 foot model, <laughs> and I like my space and stuff like that. I'm just curious, as experienced van life is. I think you guys could do it for sure, just because you guys got like the experience behind it. You know what it's like. Yeah. You do have the, the road experience. Yeah. Mm. But how long could we do it that's for? The, that's, that's the question. Real question. How long could you do it? It's how long. How long are we yeah. talking here? A weekend? <laughs> well, let's no, see. We know right. we can do it that. Well, yeah. we're gonna. Well, I think we've got some visions. So we're gonna try and feel it out a little bit in the future. Yeah, we've got yeah. a couple of RV rentals coming up soon. We're gonna try out something smaller because we're going to be flying in uh, to the Florida RV show and uh, renting a van. That'll be an interesting experience. It will be. Yeah. Well, we're looking well, forward to it. It's going to be super fun. You're going to get to zip around and do things you've never been able to do before. Mm -hmm. Picking up all these tips from you guys. It can be addictive, that's for sure. <laughs> you know, well, you okay, know. guys, so how can everyone find you and stay in touch? Because we want them to come and follow your videos and check out all the awesome content you're creating. So where can they find you? IreneIronFitness.com, IreneIronFitness at Gmail, 
Iron Iron Fitness at Instagram and at Facebook. And YouTube. And YouTube. And, Iron Fitness at YouTube. <laughs> and we'll put all the links down below so you guys can jump over and connect with Aaron and Christine. And thank you so much for everything, for all of your time. It's been awesome getting to know you guys. Yeah, it's and been great. We really love your van. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I really love how you've made this lifestyle work for you. And congratulations on all of your success, hitting one year on the road yeah. and building your business at the same time yeah. and staying married. That's, yeah. that's the yes. biggest one of all. <laughs> Thank you guys. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. It's time to cook some dinner. Let's get, Let's get it. Cook, cook some dinner in your van kitchen. Yes. That's going to be a whole other video. So, are we making a chicken enchilada one pot skillet? Skillet. Yes. Thanks so much for watching. Jump over and follow Chris and Aaron at Irene Iron Fitness. We're going to put the links to Chris and Aaron's channel and social links all down below. And until next time, we'll see, see you on the road. road. Jump over to watch Christine and Aaron's tour of our renovated motorhome and cooking video over at their channel, Irene Iron Fitness, and stay tuned to watch Julie and Chris cook dinner in their Class B van coming up soon at RV Love. Go it's pretty comfy. There's no christening in, in no. the Airstream today. Oh, this pretty nice big space. It's big, actually. It All right. cozy little space. Now we're going to close the door on you and we'll show you <laughs> what that's like. Nice little cozy, just a total sanctuary. It is nice though.